Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today I wanted to talk about this topic because I see it a lot with a lot of the people I interact with. Fear and panic make all symptoms worse. I might be able to just stop the video right there, but I'll probably explain a little bit more, give you a little bit more context. So it's a gorgeous day, blue sky, no clouds in the sky, sunny. Hope everybody's doing well. Breathe in the calm. Exhale the chaos and the panic. Breathe in the strength. Exhale the fear. Breathe in the clarity. Exhale the doubt. So, let's talk about this. Fear and panic make all symptoms worse more intense, more painful, more difficult, more challenging. It doesn't matter what you've got. You could have a true injury, you fall down, you break a, a limb, a leg, an arm, whatever. Fear and panic will make you hurt more than if you remain calm. If you ever seen uh, on television or in the movies and uh, somebody gets in a car accident, the ambulance comes over, what's the first thing they say to the people in the car? Sir, ma'am, please calm down, relax. Breathe easy. We've got you. We're going to get you out of here. We'll get you out of here. We're going to take care of you. Their first thing that they do is to try to calm them down. They know everything will go smoother if that person can remain calm. That's just an example of a real traumatic injury. Okay? But in the world of chronic pain, chronic symptoms, mind-body syndrome, um as I call it, perceived danger pain symptoms. It's really a perceived danger response. Well, if perceived danger is the cause, right? Fear and panic is just fueling that fire even more. Basically saying, the brain's going, here's a symptom, here's perce I'm perceiving danger, and by way of freaking out or panicking or really, you know, tons of fearful thoughts, what we're doing is saying, you're right, brain, we're in danger. And oftentimes what happens is symptoms get higher, right? And it's just how it works. Again, we got to keep in mind what's going on to figure out the most appropriate response that we can have, even towards symptoms that, trust me, I know firsthand can be extremely troublesome, difficult, challenging disrupting, aggravating, frustrating. I get it, been there. But it is really important to understand and keep in mind the cause, the root cause is the brain sounding the warning because it's perceiving something dangerous. So how is it possible that freaking out or going into a panic is gonna help keep you any safer or settle things down? It absolutely won't. And so it's really, really important for you to do your best to notice what's going on, but call it out and say, I know what's happening. I did not injure myself. My pain is going up. It's going the wrong direction, but I know what's going on. And I know it's good for me. So I am going to choose, make a decision to remain calm. Now, I do have a lot of people say, Dan, how is it possible to remain calm when the symptoms hurt so much? Well, because you know what they are. You know they're not dangerous. They're dis like really disturbing and uncomfortable, but they're not truly dangerous. High symptoms, and I had, I had them for 13 years, on and off, mostly on. Um, they were never dangerous, right? My symptoms started in my, in my 30s. I feel better now at 58 years old than I did in my early 30s. Why? Knowledge insight. I know what's going on. If I feel a tweak in my back, what do I do? Ah, I'm not concerned. Zero fear, zero attention. Call it out for what it is. I shift my attention away from it. It doesn't warrant attention, doesn't warrant fear, because fear and panic, aka freak out, is always going to result in a more intense set of symptoms. Because you're literally saying, 
Danger signal. Smoke alarm's on. There's the fire. I'm going to pour some fear and panic fuel on that fire. Of course it's going to get bigger, right? So it's, it's pure common sense here, folks. But it all does start with the accurate knowledge of what's going on. Perceived danger is the cause. Look, Sarno said it was emotions. Yeah, because the brain was perceiving them as dangerous. But later you can have all sorts of nocebos and medical labels and diagnoses from the doctors and the belief that this part of your body is broken because of X, Y, and Z. And Dan, how am I supposed to not be fearful because I've got this wrong with my body? And oftentimes I'll just respond and say, well, what's the hard evidence that that thing that the doctors are saying is causing the pain? What's the evidence that that's actually causing the pain? Uh, the doctor said so. Okay. Where's the proof? Rule in TMS. Rule in mind-body. Rule in this perceived danger pain. And notice your own experience. Because oftentimes you'll say, yeah, it's way worse when I'm stressed out or freaked out. Okay. Hello. Structural problems don't do that. I mean, I guess they do to a degree, but, you know, structural problems are a little bit more consistent. So the assessments are at painfreeu.com forward slash start. There's a pain test and an FIT assessment. Take them both. Give yourself the clarity that those assessments will give you. And once you know that your brain is creating the symptoms based on perceived danger, your sole, your sole effort moving forward should be remaining calm and teaching, not healing anything, teaching your brain that you're actually okay because you know what's going on and it applies to you, right? There is a cure, folks. You're actually learning it daily here. And I got a lot of people telling me I'm doing so much better because of your videos, Dan. People I've never spoken to, never earned a dime from. People around the world getting better. This stuff works, folks. It really, truly does. I've never been more confident. Never been more confident. And so much of this confidence comes from the past four and a half years of doing these daily videos and hearing all of the feedback from you, from my group coaching, working with hundreds of people in there, dealing with my one-on-one -on -one coaching prior to the group, dealing with hundreds of clients there, um, but probably tens of thousands of comments through YouTube and Facebook and interacting with people and hearing what they're going through and how my uh, teachings have resonated with them and how it's helped them. As a result, you know, I've got the biggest pain laboratory uh, available right now because I have such interaction with so many people daily. And so I've learned so much more from you folks in the past four years than I did in the prior 20 plus years trying to figure this stuff out with books and videos and all on my own. So I really thank you for the clarity I have and the certainty I have that this stuff works. It truly does. And so watch my success stories. Go to, pain, go to the Pain Free You video channel on YouTube. Um, click on playlists and scroll through it. You'll find success stories. I've got like 45 of them by now. Somewhere there, somewhere around there. Recording another one in the morning tomorrow. Recording another one next week and another one the following week. And so they just keep on rolling in. This stuff works. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. Just did the video. You know, can recovery from chronic pain be this simple? Yes, it can. Let's not overcomplicate this. The brain knows what to do if you give it the right information. Fear and panic, freak out, that's not the right information to encourage the brain to turn off these symptoms. The right information is, I'm not broken in the first place, so I'm not worried about these symptoms. Yeah, they're painful. I get it. I've had some of the most excruciating pain in my life as a result of TMS. You know, but it was never damaging, it was never dangerous. And I feel better now. 20 plus years later than I did when it first started happening. So none of this stuff is harmful, dangerous. You can get well. You will get well. It's very predictable. And so you put this stuff into play, you can get better too. So fear and panic never helped. It always made things more intense. 
So every time you find yourself in a panic, say, oh, I'm deciding to do something that's not beneficial for me. And I'll ask you this question. How much longer are you going to continue to do that? Ask yourself that question. And I know it's tough. I know it's really, really tough to remain calm, especially if the symptoms are kicking. And that's when the rational, logical thinking leaves the building and the fear voice kicks in. And the fear voice sounds logical. You know, Dan, it's really high. We better check again and make sure there's nothing physically wrong. You don't have to listen to the fear brain. Fear is a liar. So remember the rational stuff. If need be, write down some key points to remember. So if the pain gets high, you'll have that cheat sheet in front of you to go, yeah, that's right. I know what's going on. There's nothing wrong with me. I don't have to react to this with fear. I don't have to start doubting because I've already done the assessments and I've ruled in this thing called perceived danger, pain, or symptoms. That's it. It's a perceived danger response. So whatever you do, try to minimize your fear and panic and freak out in response to something that's created by the brain perceiving danger. That's gas on the fire. So... I believe you can all do this. I know you can all get better. Wouldn't be doing this every day if I didn't believe that in my heart. So, go for it. Dial down the fear. Make a decision that you're not going to fuel that fire anymore. You can do this. I believe in you. And I love you. So we'll see you folks tomorrow. Take care.